Welcome back to Lost in the Lakes. Today, we're gonna to look at some lights. And we're also gonna do a bit of wild camping. Today, I've got the Exos frame bag, so I'm not going ultralight today. I've got the uh, Solo in there, Hilleberg Solo. I'm not sure what's gonna to happen tonight with the weather. I haven't really had time to check, so it's good to, it's a good tent to pack when you're not sure what's gonna happen. Um, if there's wind, it's nearly pulled my thing up then. If there's wind, um, then this is the tent to have. I think I'd be all right with a Terra Nova, but um, probably not with the MSR, but I've got this one and it's the second time I've taken it out as well. So I might as well get used to it. Last time I pitched it in the wind and it was a bit of a fail. I won't say a fail, just a bit of a faff. I didn't have the, um, the guys tied up and they all got tangled as you can probably see in the video. Uh, right, there might be other bits before this video, but um, I'm going away for a week. So that's why we've had a bit of a sporadic couple of weeks uh, videoing. Haven't been getting the usual out. I'm going over there, that little point, that's Falcon Crag. Now everyone knows, uh, everyone knows, but everyone that comes here goes to Waller Crag and gets the views off there. This one is a uh, little bit off the beaten track. Uh, there's an easier way to get to it when you go over the back of Waller Crag and you sort of come over the side. But uh, it's a bit long-winded, so I'm gonna try something different. Um, there's a place called Catgill, which I've also been up, videoed it as well. Um, but there is a a route kind of just up the edge there. I wouldn't say it was a scramble because it's just basically it's a steep grassy slope. So we're going to give that a go. Um, I've been down there before many years ago uh, so it could have changed. Might be a little bit more overgrown now but we'll uh, yeah there's uh, you can see roots up there anyway but it's going to be a bit off piste and um, hopefully when we get up to the top there, we'll get some good views. And there's no one here. I was expecting uh, more people here. I'm just kind of on by the lake, um, walking up to a place called Calf Close Bay, which is uh, usually quite a busy one. Uh, there's a car park right opposite, um, Castle Rock, uh, Castle, no, it's not Castle Wood, I think it is. Oh, I can't remember now. Anyways, um, I'm gonna have a little venture on and I'll bring you back in a minute. Right, I thought I'd come up to this little viewpoint here. Just have a look. Uh, you can sort of see out towards, um, towards the lake there. See what the weather's doing. You can just see there where I'm gonna plan on going. Uh, the cat gill thing sort of sticks in the woods and goes up there and I'm gonna sort of make my way up there somewhere. Again, it's a steep grassy point. Uh, there is another route. I think it's more off that way somewhere, but I'm gonna stick off the screes, keep in the grass and follow the trail on this side of the gill. Okay, so uh, just walking along the lake here. I think probably one of my first videos was me running along here. And it seems so long ago. Um, it's probably about what we at now, or, or October. So um, eight months since I started doing this channel. I think second video maybe. First video was almost a short, and uh, things have progressed. I think I've gained a lot of experience as well. 
as far as uh, camping and stuff like that. So it's almost scary knowing what I know now and what I was doing. As you can see some people snapping twigs and there's a lot of wild campers in there doing stuff. That's by the lake shore that is. But um, yeah, so knowing what I know now, um, gear wise, tent wise, um, it's almost a bit um, uneasy to know what I slept through and I'm so glad that I did the way I did it. Um, so if there was any problem uh, on my first couple of camps, I wasn't far away from home. But okay, so we've uh, crossed the road a bit. There was a few people on the track. Uh, so I've come back into the woods now, just at the bottom of Falcon Crag. So as I was saying, um, it's almost scary knowing what I didn't know. Um, and uh, I'm so glad that I had good equipment uh, from the get-go, really. Um, I kind of, I got some stuff and then didn't, it, the quality of the materials and things just didn't seem right. And uh, all I was asking everyone, people were saying, yeah, they're fine. But I think they're saying, yeah, they're fine because you've, you've, you've bought them. And uh, they don't want to say, no, what you've just bought is a pile of crab. Now, I wish some people had, uh, and um, just like straight told me. Uh, it's maybe a lesson for the people that work in outdoor shops, I suppose. Um, ask what you're going to do with the equipment first. You know, it's like, I know I was just starting out, but I was starting out in winter, and maybe I did need pay a bit more for for kit so what happens is you buy a cheap tent and go out and go oh this tent's cheap and then have to uh, go and buy a, an expensive tent with a cheap tent as well i suppose the only benefit i've got is i've got a youtube channel so i can do a comparison video of cheap versus expensive i suppose right things have changed this route I'm going up here is the scramble I did many moons ago. So it looks like we're doing a scramble. I thought I was lower down. Um, actually, maybe not. We might be coming up to the track now and then we'll veer left. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, maybe it is. I don't know, it's, it's all overgrown here at the minute. But if we have to go up there, it's fine. Here we go, here's the trail. So we can go left here now. I can hear Cat Gill and we're here. So it looks like, are we? That path is so overgrown that I don't think we're gonna be taking it. Let me have a quick look on the map. I want to get up there really. I'm going to go back and see if I've missed something. Uh, yeah, so there is a path, but I think it goes up by the gill, so we'll go this way, and, um, and then kind of filters into nothing, so we'll go up there and see, see what happens. So these are the steps at the bo bottom of Falcon Crag. Uh, Oh, you know what, it's really hot. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Muggy, that's what the word is. <sighs> now, I believe the path in question is supposed to be in amongst this lot, but... Aha! This is it. There's Cat Gill. And this is that little tiny path that's hidden and takes you up. 
It is very overgrown. Hopefully we'll get out the trees in a minute and we can get up there pretty quick. This is steep. Right. I do believe we're still on the path here, you know, it's a little worn out bit. But it's going to be a case of make it up when you get near the top. We'll just follow these semi broken bits of bracken and just hope we're going to end up up that point there. Now, this is what you call trailblazing. Look, there's just no path. But we've got cat bells there which is what we're waiting for. This is what the uh, light's all about. I'll talk about that when I get to the top. Okay, it looks like we've got no path at all, but I've just come off a path and I was just about to say, it's, um, the path is here, but I'm just looking for little fallen bits, little broken branches, just any sort of uh, any sort of uh, sign that someone's walked along here now. You have to be really careful at this point because there is, uh, is the gill and it's quite a big drop. So, although like the path goes up there, I think we're going to go through this bit here. And sometimes when you think you're not on the right place, you get to something like this, a style. It's like, why, where, where did this come from? Uh, and there's a path going up. If you turn around, look at the view now. Be a nice little camp place there. Looking out onto the, uh, mountains over there. With this star being here, it just shows you that there is a recognized path, albeit very steep and very seldom used. There is a, a notable path. And like I say, that there, if you've got a hammock or something, or in winter, be a nice little camp there. This will be all, because it's all level there when the bracken dies down. That would be quite a good one. So we're going to go up here now. And I believe it's going to get <laughs> steeper again. So we're going off to the right here. And we're going to cut up through here now. Oh, bit of a step. And then into nothing. <laughs> As you can see, some people have gone off that way. I'm going to try and get through this way just because it's off the edge of the waterfall. Right, this is where the adventure starts, I think. No one's been through this. But I think if we can get off to the right there, Looks like it fizzles out. Oh, when I started, I was wondering whether I should put a jacket on. And look at me now. I've got a full on sweat on. But looking up there, I think we're uh, coming out of the trees. Got the odd stone. Just wondering if anyone's actually threw a stone off here. I think we might need to be going up, traverse to the right there, which is kind of like there and then off that way. But you can see how steep it is and where I've come from. And like I say, look at that steepness there. You can see how steep it is. And like I say, this is where the adventure starts. Because I'm not sure how long it's going to take to get up there. But 
looking at the surrounding fells. I think we'll get up within about 10 minutes. Right, oh, it's a nice breeze there. Right, I'm gonna get on. Right, I don't know if anyone could see, but it looks like there's a little path through there that takes us up <coughs> over that little hump there, this little sort of cliff. Um, so I'm gonna walk up to the top there and see what it's like. Hopefully this stuff dies down a bit. You can see where I've come from. If anyone would like to do this trail, I'd probably, I know you get some nice views, but you can also get some stuff up there. <clears throat> right, off I go. So you can see the cliff face there. Um, on top of a bit of a drop here now. This has become a bit of a mission, this. So I'm gonna go back on here and hopefully our camp spot's just up there. And again, this is uh, Falcon Crag. You've got Catgill just over there, but it hides. It's hidden by this sort of uh, area. So I think I'm gonna traverse up there and then cut through these uh, winnie bushes here. Winnie bushes are these prickly things. And uh, it's an old Cumbrian term. Well, certainly a term we used when we were kids. I'm gonna have a little gander over here. There you go, there's Falcon Crag. Okay, we're coming up now, found the path. You can feel the rain coming in. So we're gonna get up over the top there as this grass is gonna get pretty slippy and you don't wanna be going down there. As spectacular as it looks, it's bloody steep. So let's see if there's anyone camping here. First pitch we're clear. Hopefully the second pitch where I actually wanna go is clear. This rain's coming in. It's actually quite nice. Oh. So this pitch here, we are actually very clear. <sighs> but we'll see. The intended pitch. I think we're gonna dump it here. Um, this rain looks like it's gonna stop any minute anyway. So I'm gonna take a wander down. So glad I put these um, pants on. I was gonna put some lightweight sort of summer pants on. And I thought I'd put the uh, Fjall Raven Kebs on. And I'm so glad I have because the stuff I've been going through, it's been a bit of a nightmare. I'm just gonna climb up to that point there, see what we've got. Looks like my mic's getting low. I need to get it charged. So we'll get up here. Bag's over at that point there. But I think to be honest, we might be here. You know, I looked at it, it was like super flat. But this is uh, not. But we are higher up, still out of the way of the main path. And start to see a few people going up, up uh, cat bells now. You know, what, I think we found our spot. Right, we're going here. This is going to get us what we want. We've got views in the path right there, but. We're gonna be looking out that way and we've got some nice views here. Right, I'm gonna go and grab my bag. I'm gonna leave the camera here, run down, get the bag, and we'll get this pitched up. Right, so we're gonna get the tent pitched here-ish. Um, hopefully it's a quicker pitch than last time. Learn by my mistakes. 
Obviously it's not as windy, still got a bit of a breeze. So we'll um, drop the pegs on there. Stick the repair pole in there. And that can go in the side of my rucksack for now. Let's get these poles out. That's it. She's up, let's get in and get dry. Right, so we're in the tent. And what we're here for, why we've come over here, is because uh, every year there's this thing called the Festival of Light. Uh, earlier this year, it was, it was supposed to be earlier this year, but uh, it got wetted out, it was too windy. Um, and that time of year, when it's cold and wet, you don't want to be hanging around on the mountain. So what it is, is you get maybe three four hundred people going up cat bells all the way up and then when it gets dark you all switch the lights on and it looks quite spectacular so i've come up here on the opposite side hoping that it's actually going ahead uh, the wind's still i mean it's not atrocious but i can't see many people up there i mean obviously i'm quite far away um, I've tried to tap into the uh, radio, uh, but I don't know what frequency, frequency they're on, so uh, I can't hear anything. I did hear um, some people speaking before, but I don't think they're to do with the light festival. Um, and looking down at Crow Park, Usually there's like a crowd of people down there. Now the problem is they didn't actually say when the lights were going to be switched on, when they're actually going to do it. So is it going to happen? I don't know. Um, I'm hoping it is, and I'm hoping we can get a view. But with this rain on and off, I'm not too sure. You can't, it just shows you can't plan these things in, uh, in the Lake District. It's been great previous years it's the first time it's been postponed and you know they've done it now August you'd think it'd be lovely weather look at this outside there's cat bells there's the peak just there and um, hopefully we'll get to see all this lit up I can see a few lights shining up there now um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to stick this in a time lapse and then hopefully we can see some uh, some lights coming on Pasta, oh fungi, not a fungi, whatever it is. So this is adventure food. And I've said it. the price on this stuff and the taste on this stuff is quite good. So um, I'm gonna get this together. It's getting a bit windy outside now. Got the vents open. So this uh, 
canister that I've got is uh, three pound fifty for that, and it's uh, brewed locally. It's uh, gasped locally, whatever. So that uh, that's Go System. It's called. Yeah. Go. Let's get some water in. Food. Going a little bit more. Right, so get that boiling now. These things are numbered on the outside there, and then there's a number uh, number on uh, somewhere. It somewhere. Where did it go? Anyway, so the big number eight there. I need to pour this in and make sure it gets to number eight. Oops. Right. So I've gone back to the uh, the long spork. That's not even a spork. This one. It is just a spoon. It's just so easy for getting that into there so I think we're gonna measure out another cup of water right so let's chuck that in there so we know there's a good cup of tea oh, well, cup of, what we're gonna have what we have and I don't even know what we've got Cafe LA, so just a coffee with milk. Okay, so we'll get this spark back up again. We need for a cup of tea. Coffee even. Right, so we've got eight minutes for this one. Boiling. I think we're going to go back to the jet boil, wind burner, whatever it is. This thing burns you for the hands. Boil as quick as it should, or as efficient as it should. Right, I'm going to eat up now. It's been eight minutes, so I think I'm going to eat this, drink this and then I'm gonna to go to bed. Good night, y'all. Well, good morning. It's uh, six o'clock in the morning and uh, been up about 10 minutes. Had a little wander around, a little look outside. Yeah, there's, um, it's windy, but clear, I suppose. Let's have a little look outside. There you go. You can just see cat bells over there. Looking down into Borrowdale. And again, this is, this seems to be our summer this year. There's no different. I mean, we've had some clear days. When it's sunny, it's warm, but you know, mid August now. But we've still got lovely views. You can just see Bass Lake over there in the distance. And over to the right, Skidder, where I was up last week. Right, so I'm going to get packed up and um, again, not going to bother with breakfast this morning. Got a short walk off the hill and uh, I'll be uh, back down. I've got a christening to go to today. Uh, so my niece is uh, one this week, 
and it's uh, christening so we're going to go to that and uh, these are the normal things you have to do in life you know camp up a mountain and then go down and uh, go to a christening right okay so i'm going to get packed up now and get down all right well there's the pitch look at that perfect timing sunshine just coming up a little bit there probably got about five minutes of uh, sun and then we'll back to uh, back to that and in fact there's a couple of bits of blue sky coming in so there we go a nice little reminder that it is still summer and the sun does shine now and again so I'm gonna pack this up now take one last little look at this view and then get down Right, there we go, leave no trace. There's actually, I thought it was quite flat, but uh, it's a little bump here that I sort of slept on. But it's surprising, you know, when you get sat down and lying down, it uh, doesn't need to be perfectly flat. Looks like there's someone in the lake already. Like This is what someone's uh, done prior to, to me, you know, they've had a, some sort of fire there but hopefully that's one but I mean that's going to stay like that for ages it's going to take a while for that to um, grow back maybe we'll come back and see what it's like in a year's time down to the christening Sunday morning what time are we on now seven o'clock so hopefully we'll be back for about eight. Ooh, midges are coming out already so the forecast was for a bit of rain this morning and uh, it's um, not not raining, which I'm so glad because uh, I'm actually going away next week and I'm not gonna have time with the christening today to actually uh, do anything with the tent. Uh, so. It's not going to get dried out. So I'm quite glad it stayed dry. Has been a bit of a break in uploads, but um, that's purely because of the summer holidays and uh, the chaos of what lies within of the holidays when having children and uh, having to have breaks and do things with them. Uh, so, normal upload shall resume as the summer holidays finish and the school days and a bit of um, normality returns and again when you live in a very sort of tourist town and your work relies on tourism um, summer holidays it is busy times it's coming up over the top here. I mean, you, you could camp up here actually, but um, it's quite rocky, so uh, there's there's better places to camp. I was over over there. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Again, while the crag, quite a busy one. But we're the only ones up today. Some lovely views. Weather's a bit, I don't know what you call it, squally, I suppose. It's quite windy, but we haven't got any rain coming through, but it wouldn't surprise me if it rains any minute. Keswick there and then Skidder in the background. Right, this wind's picking up. Just see the uh, 
the lake there is getting a bit rough. And this is what I had during the night. You know, it, it died off and then suddenly there was like a lot of wind and then it died off again and then there was a lot of wind. So it was on and off, forgot my headphones. I usually sort of put one in and it blanks most of the sound out. So I had a, a chattery night, I think. And uh, I heard the famous Hilleberg jingle of the um, zips. It is a thing. Now, I heard reviews and I've seen someone doing a review saying that they don't jingle that much. But when you've got a sort of, when you're on top of a cliff like I was, the wind rocks it, you know, it buffers rather than a, if you've got a constant wind, it just sort of pushes the tent. But this was one where it sort of buffered the tent. So you do get a jingle. Um, and it's not that bad, really. I still slept. One to look at in the future. I mean, there's obviously a reason why Hilleberg still used this, the same ones. Um, you know, you, you can get plastic um, tips. You've seen people modifying them with different zips. So, uh, <sighs> maybe in winter time or something when it's a pain. I don't know, um, f for me, it seems all right. If I'm constantly using this in wind, you know, if this is gonna be my high wind tent, which it will be, um, I might look at modifying it. But the space in this tent is brilliant. Um, some people say it's quite low, but I find it's really high, you know, I can, and it's longer than my other tents as well, both of them, longer than both of them. And which makes it um, easier to pack away in, inside the tent, which is what I'm after in winter, you know. I don't want to be having to go outside and getting cold. Um, you know, try and keep warm inside the tent, out of the wind. All right, this is going to be fun. Crossing this section here, this little boggy section. With the amount of rain we've had in the last couple of days, all this land here is really boggy now. It's usually where you go through, it's um, really boggy. I'm going to try, try and work my way over this bit here. I think we're out of the bog. Still quite spongy. Make our way to high land. There we go. That's it. We're out. Didn't fancy taking the, um, the other path on the other side there. Purely because I've got the weight on the pack and if that's uh, wet, don't fancy slipping. It's a weird one today. It's uh, the views are just, they're not standing out. But apart from these colours, I don't know if you can get and the colours of this expanse, all this um, heather, nice and purple. Okay, just over in the distance, you can see Blencathra and uh, just a little tan over there. That's Stuart Tan, where I've um, not camped at the town, but just further up from there. Um, I've camped up there. Blencathra is still to be had, still not camped up there. We've now done Skidder, Carlside and Lonsdale, which is over there. And uh, it would have been a test up Skidder today. If it had been um, this time last week when I was up Skidder with this weather, it would have been a real good test of uh, how much this tent could hold. I would imagine it must be 60 mile an hour up there. If we're getting 30 down here, 30, 40 mile an hour down here, up there, it's going to be a real, really, <clears throat> really good test. So the uh, Hilleberg pegs are just like these V pegs, really good quality, but 
um, the shape of them doesn't lend it themselves good for um, really soft ground. So you can get some like bigger pegs, you can get snow, all sorts of pegs. But um, that is probably something uh, I need to look at with this tent, maybe um, six extra pegs. So I've got the 12, which is good. Um, but I think six big pegs for the guys will probably do. The ones that are in the ground sheet, the ones that come with it will be fine for the ground sheet, but if I really want to get them guys tied down, maybe some bigger pegs would be uh, in order. Got quite a steep grassy slope coming up now. Thankfully it's dry, so we're not getting slippy. Right, so it's um, half past seven and I still haven't met anyone yet. No one's up. Which I'm quite surprised with Wallacrag. I thought uh, at least, you know, someone will be walking the dog or something, but no one at all. Okay, so they're starting. A couple of mountain bikers going up there now. Early doors, doing the Burdell Bash. If anyone wants to know, this is the start. You know, up Walla Crag is this, or the alternative start to the Borrowdale Bash. Just hear the farmer shouting at his dogs. I was saying this the other day about real life farming. When you see, um, see it on telly, it's, it's always this like, come by. And, uh, you know, quite relaxed sort of um, shepherding. In reality, Farmer's on his quad, shouting and gollering at his, his, his dogs to, to come round and do whatever they need to do. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's not this sort of um, shepherd with a staff and just, you know, you go that way and you go that way. No, none of that. Quite a few profanities uh, are shouted at them dogs. We're a bit lower now. That's it, now we're into the trees onto a road. So on that note, this has been another successful wild camp and we'll see you in the next one.